What's up and good afternoon guys. Welcome back to another video. It has been a long time since we have done a video inside the Workfort World headquarters, but that is where we are as denoted by the Workfort paint job on the back wall there. Also, if you guys would be so kind, head on over to workfortapparel.com. Get yourself a shirt, a sweatshirt, a hoodie, a hat, an embroidered work jacket, all kinds of cool stuff. A decal? Okay, now that I'm done with my shameless plug, let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. Well, first we got to fire up the forklift because uh Used this thing the other night and she didn't sound too happy. Now, she hasn't ran in a long time and maybe she just needs to run for a while. I know you gotta run the water out of these things like you'll see when we started up right now. She's gonna be leaking a little bit of water. Uh, water and condensation builds up inside of these propane forklifts and uh, they don't like that. So let's turn on our propane. We'll get this thing fired up. Hopefully she fires up. And actually runs good because we need her to push my trailer into the shop. All right, come on old girl. Oh, also, if you guys want, you can get your sweet billet bottle opener over at workfortapparel.com as well. So we're gonna let this old girl warm up for a second and check out what's right here. Some of you guys might notice what style of crate that is. There is a brand new 6.7 Power Stroke sitting in there. That's, uh, that'll be for another video. Now, the weather is absolute garbage today. You see all the water and the drainage swale going out. I'm looking at how much water is just coming off the roof of all the warehouses. It is absolutely dumping. Make this quick we've got my diamond seat lpt dump trailer and in the back seat right there in that box we've got a really cool modification for it that i'm excited for we'll talk more about that once we get it inside get our chains pulled off um well 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 and you know this is a good opportunity to show the last modification we did to the trailer which is this wireless remote that wirelessly controls the hydraulic tongue jack as well as the dump box so all we do is we put off the safety, we hit start, and then we drop our hydraulic tongue jack. Super easy, just like that. She will come up, disconnect from the truck. And we are ready to pick her up with the forklift. All right, let's see if the old girl wants to cooperate. She's definitely a little smoky, but that might be water vapor. I don't know. Hey, Sergio! Good timing, buddy. I'm still alive. Sergio, I didn't even have to go looking for you this time. <laughs> Well, I was like, I hear noises outside, and then I checked, and I see you walking around. Sergio, I need a roof. I need a roof. Close. Sergio, look, I can raise it from here. Look at that, easy. Sergio, you need to stock these. This thing's great. It would have been quicker with the truck. Now at this point, if you've been watching the channel for the last year or so, you know we've made a lot of modifications to this trailer. And I'm not gonna like completely go through all of that stuff because I feel like it's redundant. So there's videos on pretty much every modification we have done. But now that I've owned the trailer with these modifications, let me give you guys a little bit of an insight and maybe some of the downfalls of what we've done. So we'll open up the tongue and let me grab the wireless lighting remote, which is this booger right here. So this one controls all the lights around the trailer. Uh, maybe if it wants to work today. Oh, maybe it just needed to wake up. I don't know what's going on with this remote system. All right, well, downfall number one, for some reason my remote system is not working. It turned on the side lights, so one of these buttons worked. There we go. What's going on? I wonder, wonder if this battery's weak on this thing. It shouldn't be. We'll get right next to the receiver. All right, that's super weird. All right, well, let's talk about a little bit of the downfalls. So we did all of the lighting on this trailer, right? We've got our side lights, every light on here strobes, and then we obviously we've got the inbox lights, which are those right there that light up the uh, inside the dump box. We went ahead and used this cheap wireless controller. Now I would say this cheap Chinese wireless controller because that's what this is. However, I've got the other Chinese wireless controller, the SLA Hextedid that I got off of Amazon, and this thing works great. So 10 out of 10 do not recommend this one. What's crazy is this thing is super susceptible to other signals. So if you're parked in a parking lot and somebody like uses their key fob or something to unlock their car, 
uh, it'll turn all the lights on. There's been times I've been driving and all of the lights just turn on. The strobes start going off, everything goes crazy, and I have to keep one of these in the truck to actually shut them off while I'm driving because that has happened a few times. So at some point, this will be getting swapped out, and what I should have done is I should have gotten just like a, an eight channel one of these, and it would have had all of the lighting buttons on one of these style remotes versus this style. So at some point I might upgrade this, which will mean I'll need a new receiver, which is right there. But for a couple hundred bucks, I think um, this one was a hundred, but I'm definitely going to be swapping out. This is just a much more robust system than this. Now, when having wireless stuff, either of these, one problem you run into is there is a constant power draw on your trailer because these things are constantly looking for the signal from your remote. So they always have a power draw. I mean, you can see right there, the light is on on that booger that is for the lighting. Um, so that constantly has a power draw as well as that receiver right there constantly has a power draw, which if you let your trailer sit for any extended period of time, you draw down on your batteries. Now this trailer does have a solar panel on it. However, I have noticed that that solar panel is not enough to account for those being on full time if this thing is just not fully in the sun uh, as many hours of a day as you can get it. So I have come out to my trailer dead. And the problem is when the trailer batteries are completely dead, you have no brakes. Even hooked up to the truck for some reason, there's no brakes until I charge the battery back up. So there's a downfall to wireless and I didn't think it would be an issue because we have the solar panel. So we didn't put this on a separate switch. So what I'll have to do is I come in here and I pull the fuses for the wireless setup. Again, it's another thing we're gonna eventually change over. There will be a basically a master kill switch for all the wireless stuff, but there's a little bit of an issue with that. So if this remote works, let's try it again. There we go. Hey, look at that. All right. So since we use this strobe module and we tied into the factory lighting to make those strobe, if I kill power to that strobe module, I lose my running lights. So that one's one we're going to have to finagle with, and I'm sure Sergio can come up with a solution for that. All right, are we going to turn it off? Look at, is this thing just going to work perfectly now? Look at that. All, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, this, this remote is very, very temperamental. I don't understand why. Oh, now it's not working. Maybe it's the battery of the remote, I don't know. Up until now though, all of these modifications have been my ideas. Sergio's the master that comes over and helps me wire this stuff up. But recently, Diamond C reached out to me and said, hey, we've got a modification for your trailer we think you're really gonna like. That's sitting right there in that box. We'll get to that in a second, but check these out. These are super, super cool. You can see on the trailer, right, we've got the standard Diamond C uh, vinyl decals, which over time, you know, decals just don't like the sun. They end up eventually just kind of getting a little, a little funky. Uh, that actually pulled off really nicely. Thank God, because that's gonna make this part easier, but check out Diamond C's new logos. Um, they'll look cooler once we go to put them on, but they are these like gnarly 3D, I don't know if that's metal, that little, the little diamond looks, looks metal, maybe it's glossy plastic, but check these things out. These are sick. So we're gonna be putting these new Diamond C logos on, but they're like this crazy 3D, I don't even know what type of material. Oh, anyways, we've got these new to go on the trailer, which I'm really, really excited about. And then we've got this. So in this box, we've got a tarp motor. So on this trailer, we've got a really cool self-deploying tarp system. It's spring loaded. So I'm like putting no pressure in this. I'll do it with my finger. Watch this, ready, ready, go. And it, had to catch up there for a second. So this tarp system is super nice. It's all spring loaded. You don't have to sit there and pull your tarp out, run a, you know, tie a string to the back or anything like that, like on some of the older style dump trailers. Here you can see kind of the spring tensioner systems. I don't know exactly how those work, but those are some pretty strong springs in there. And that's what helps pull the tarp up by itself. To bring it down, you just crank the handle. Now I kind of helped to debut this system on the new Diamond Seed trailers. And I did get a few comments from people being like, well, that should be electric. How come it's not electric? The big semis use electric or hydraulic. Well, that's about to change, guys. That's about to change. So obviously you can see it's not built by Diamond Seed. This is from Durabilt, but it is gonna be an option on the new Diamond Seed trailers. I don't know if it's gonna be a standard option or if you have to add it, but the capabilities are now here. So we're gonna figure this out. There's a lot going on in here. We've got a control box. We've got some wireless module. Check this thing out. I know nothing about any of this. I was sent one video of this working by Diamond C and that's it. We're playing a, playing quite the guessing game here. This thing's like a little wireless controller. We're going to add some more wireless to this. Look at that. I don't even know. Tarp, hopper, lights, select on off do we mount this somewhere? Is this a key ring? I don't know. Now I will say there is one issue with my tarp and you can see it right now. It's a little bit cockeyed. And it's actually been like that since I bought the trailer. So there's little adjustment points you can make here and I don't know exactly how to do it. But somehow you can kind of clock this a little bit different. This wheel, you can see there's a bunch of holes in this little wheel. You can clock it a little bit different and I believe 
that evens that out. When I picked this up from the dealership, they were actually working on clocking this and they got it close. Um, obviously they were rushing because they knew I was coming to film, so it's never been perfectly dialed. Probably figured that out and dialed it in. It's not like it affects anything, it just looks a little funky when you got one side up a little higher than the other. Now by the looks of it, I think we just replaced the handle with this motor, which is, ooh, look at that, we even got a cover. Oh, that's a pretty good size hefty motor there. So that I believe just replaces that handle. Some bolts. All right, anything else in this box? Or is this pretty simple? Nope, that's all we got. Motor and some bolts. I bet we got some instructions in here. Let's see. Hey, 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 there we go. We got a drill template. Drill 0.875. Interesting. All right, on the left side of the trailer, inner box rail, drill seven eighths hole above the hinge. So like when we wired up all of this lighting, being that this trailer goes up and down, all of the wiring has to run all the way back to that hinge point back there, and then all the way front to the battery box. But other than that, it looks pretty simple. First things first, we have to unbolt this entire box right here that has the gear mechanism for the handle. Now they show this thing down, the arms are down. I hope this doesn't make a difference. I don't think it does. We're gonna do it with this heart pulled all the way out because it doesn't have everything bunched up right here and it's easier to work. And it's a little strange, hopefully this doesn't need to come off. And we don't need to get inside here. But it kind of feels like this one's just spinning. Well, I guess we're opening this up. I'm assuming it's just these two outer ones. So apparently these top two only took off the side covers, but that actually is, I'm thinking, all we're gonna need. So now we can get to the nut on the back side of that bolt. We also have to pull this out because the motor has a shaft that looks like it goes inside of this too. I don't think we have to disassemble it any more than this. I still have to pop this cover off. Uh, is it gonna come off? Maybe, maybe not. Found this little tool in the toolbox. Don't know what it is, but it makes a great pry bar. All right, we are in. So I didn't realize that's an open slot, so we should probably undo this first. Oh, it's a little bit smaller there. Alrighty, now this thing's probably gonna drop when we separate this. Well, I guess we can't separate it. All right, let's pull off the last bolt and we can, then we can separate it. Getting a little ahead of myself here, but you know, I feel like I do that a lot. Alrighty, y'all, let's see what happens here. This could go bad. This could go easy. So far? That was pretty easy. Now I believe that is where this template comes into play. Maybe, maybe not. Let me go back to my instructions, which are very well done by the way, I guess. You know, when you're making instructions for your own product, no, that is for the template. Uh, and you have the 3D drawings of your product, it makes it really nice to make directions. Now while the drill template is nice, does that circle line up in the center of that hole? Is that how that works? Or what? Now I think I've got this to what makes sense to me. I centered the line of the little, what I'm assuming is the spindle mark on this template with the old hole. So I think that's gonna keep this center because we have to match over there where that one's already bolted up into this bracket. So the spindle coming off of this, I want to be in a similar area that that one was. So I kinda eyeballed to where I think that should go. That is center of the existing holes. Uh, it actually shows up pretty good on camera. You can see the light through there. Um, so it was pretty easy to line up. We're just gonna go for it now. We're gonna pop these three holes in. Good news is if we completely obliterate this and screw up, we can always bolt the handle back on and just act like this video never happened. I'm gonna start with an eighth inch pilot bit. That way we can get this nice and centered up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa we do not want that on hammer mode. Just drill, just drill. Looks like we did pretty good. So now we pull the template off. We'll open these up to the 5 sixteenths that they were requested to be. I will say the tongue box makes for a nice workbench. So I went ahead and used this Nick stick cutting compound, totally forgot to hit record. But I uh, got the 5 sixteenths holes drilled pretty easily. Everything's looking good. Uh, what this does is it basically just helps to keep everything cool, helps to pull the chips out. These things save drill bits, so. I don't buy the most expensive drill bits in the world. In fact, I get a lot of these drill bits for free. If you order anything from Uline, like our shipping supplies we do for work for it, usually like if you spend $1,000, $2,000, whatever it is on shipping supplies, you get like 
used to get like useless stuff, you know, like a, I don't know, a blanket or a towel or a beach chair. But now they started offering Milwaukee drill bit sets. And again, they're not the most high end drill bit sets, but at least I'm getting a little bit of something back for all the money we spend with Uline. So now we're going to see if this mates up. We're gonna need three of these. Oh, is she gonna fit? All right, she fits. And then, see how good we did. Even comes with the Allen key. The next step is to link these together and you can see where the old bolt went through doesn't exactly line up with the hole that is on the motor. I did come over to this side and this side runs through a bearing and I'm like, well, it doesn't really want to move over. It's pretty tight, but I noticed if I smacked her a little bit, it actually does come over. So I think I can tap it over with a hammer and get all that we need to get. Ooh, that is almost perfect. Get the bolt in there. It's a little tight. Next up, we need to mount this monster of a control system. Now this setup is pretty cool. So it's got the actual open and close buttons on the controller itself. So this gets mounted. I don't want to pull all this wiring out, but just take my word for it. That gets mounted right there. So we need to drill a hole for the wire to pass through. And what's funny is we've already done modifications to this trailer. So if you look at a lot of where Diamond C tells you to drill holes to pass wires through. We've already pretty much done that just in a little bit different of a fashion. So this is a good channel to run wires in. This is like a, I don't know, what is that? A six by six steel corner. So we actually ran these corner light wires, uh, where are they at right there, through that. And then we stubbed out here, and then we go down into the actual frame of the box there, which sends our wires all the way back. Now, unfortunately, we can't use those same holes because we need to be significantly bigger, and there's no way to drill those out bigger without destroying that wire. So we're gonna end up putting some new holes in. We also get the dimensions to mark the holes for where the control box goes because there is a wire that comes directly out of the back. So that is 14 inches down from the top, three inches over from one side. Now, I don't know whose tape measure this is in the shop. Uh, I have owned exactly one Milwaukee tape measure. Bought it when it first came out. It's cool because it has a magnet on it. Uh, if it'll stick, it's not that strong. Let's see, stick to some bare metal. All right, well, this one's kind of boogered up, but the magnet on it I thought was gonna be cool. There you go, she's sticking. Uh, but within one day of owning this, I managed to rip this entire uh, hook piece off by just hooking it onto some boards and pulling. Again, I'm not sure whose this is, but you can see it's already got a nice chunk out of it right there, which makes it a pain in the butt to close because that little piece gets stuck on it. So you gotta put that down with your finger and not cut yourself. Get that in there. I own a lot of Milwaukee tools. I'm pretty loyal to the Milwaukee brand, but the tape measures are junk. Don't buy one. Stanley Fat Maxes, that's it. Now it calls out for 0.875 inch holes. Now that's the engineer talking here. In the real world, that's about seven eighths. So I've got a seven eighths hole saw, but I think we're gonna destroy that. So we're gonna go with the seven eighths step bit and uh, see if this takes too long, maybe we'll switch over, but we'll go step bit. Now we've gotta make uh, at least four of these holes, I think. One there, one there, one there, at least one in the back. Gonna be a good amount of holes. We're gonna need some pressure. I also may have borrowed this from Sergio. He uses all of his step bits with an impact. So this one might be toast already before we even start. I don't think a Nick stick does much with a step bit, but maybe. Yeah, we're not getting very far with that. All right, hole saw it is. Sergio, if I destroy your hole saw, I owe you another one. There we go. All right, that wasn't too bad. Now, can we get this off of there? There we go. All righty. And it looks like we still got all the teeth. And a nice clean hole. All righty, now we're gonna raise it up so I can drill those two bottom holes. The nice thing about a dump trailer is you can get it to a comfortable working height. No need to bend over. Let's see, about oh, right there. It's good comfortable working height. Now I'm hoping we don't just completely destroy this wire when we put this hole in. But if we do, I guess we'll have a new hole to run it out of. Oh, no. Uh, well, that lives in there now. Now there's kind of a hefty amount of wire that has to get pulled. I'm seeing two sets of terminals on here. What's going on? That's a separate, we don't, we don't know what that is yet. But this wire has to go through this hole out here 
back into another hole we're gonna drill all the way down to the back of the trailer, all the way up to the front. I'm gonna be doing that with Sergio's help because Sergio has uh, all of the fish sticks and he's a master of chasing wires. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get this from here to there today but we're gonna try, that way we can get all of the hardware mounted up. And then we will be back tomorrow when Sergio's not busy and we'll finish the wiring portion of it. So right inside here, you have this piece of steel that comes in. They basically notched this corner piece to slide over the edge of the bed. So we only have to there in this space right here. We should have drilled it over here, but the instructions say about right there. Um, all right, we're gonna have to find something to try to send in between there first. Oh, I might have found us a good tool. Will that reach? That will reach. Will she go where we want? Oh, come on. We'll go in the hole that way. What if we go up? Up does me no good. What am I thinking? Actually, up does do me good. Up is the way we want to go. All right. Uh, I just don't think there's any way we're gonna grab that. Well, I found this random USB cable and I was actually able to fish it down through. Oh no, I grabbed that in the wrong spot with my little Whoa, fingers here. Oh, don't lose it. Nope, grab the wrong wire. So uh -oh, I might have just lost it. Where'd you go? So I ran this the wrong way, but obviously uphill's not gonna happen. We need to pull the wire this way, which means this big end would have to go through, make this turn and come out, which I don't know if that's necessarily gonna be possible. And I don't wanna cut this cable, but geez, I can't even get this other end through. And this end is significantly smaller. I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about difference-wise. I don't think this end is gonna wanna cooperate. Actually, maybe it will. All right. Now, don't laugh at me, but the only tape I could find in the shop was this green uh, masking tape. This is probably not gonna work with that big USB end in there. Uh, it's a pretty hefty thing to try to get through. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think we're gonna, I don't think that's gonna work. We're gonna try, just so we can say we tried. Let's see, y'all, it's really this, piece right here that goes in that I'm the most worried about because that creates a pretty pretty good size wall in there. Oh yeah, we're already hung up on that. At this point, I probably should have cut this USB cord because we're probably destroying it. Gamma, you're close. I wonder if I separate this bundle now, if I could pull these through. I just really don't want to lose one inside of there. Let's see if we can kind of coerce it out of there with some channel locks. There we go, we got one. And we got two. I just really don't think we're getting that USB out of there, maybe. Oh, come on, you're so close. Nope, we got it out. So this process officially sucks. Again, with that wall that's inside of there, I have to keep twisting this to get it to want to come out. And then thankfully they got a really thick jacket on this wire because it just keeps catching right on the inside of this hole. And even if I twist it, it eventually catches a little bit. So you're basically going like, an inch, inch and a half at a time, which sucks because I feel like I get a lot done and then I still have this much wire over here that needs to go through. Man, oh man, what a process, but we are so close, guys, and I've only managed to drop the control box once, so hopefully we didn't do any irreparable damage, but we are pretty close here. We could probably just feed the rest of this in. They built it one inch at a time. Pretty solid, our whole lines up, everything worked. And you can see these terminals go to the actual electric motor itself. One more hole and do this all over again. Thankfully that's a straight shot, none of this finagling over thing. But I think we're gonna jump back on that tomorrow with Sergio here. All right, y'all, we're back and we're already starting the day off not so great. I wore off a decent amount of teeth off this hole saw trying to uh, put that hole that's gonna send the wires all the way to the back of the frame. Uh, we are like so close to popping through, but this thing just does not have any life left in her. So we're gonna have to run to the store, grab a couple more of these 7 8 hole saws before we can even run the wires and continue. So. Pause. Alrighty, picked up two of these bad boys. These things are $18 a piece. I borrowed that other one from Sergio. We got two holes out of it. Now he uses the crap out of these things, so it was probably pretty well used before we got a hold of it. However, if I do burn this one up, doing the next two holes, I wanna have a brand new one to give back to Sergio. So that's why we got two, and hopefully those last us. But first, let's open this up. Also, we've got work for it hitch covers in stock. If you guys are looking to get you some hitch covers, ugh. Focus open up. Whoa, this one's even got a little spring inside. Look at that. To eject your material. The other one, does the other one have that? I don't know. There we go. Hey, it actually worked. Look at that. The spring popped it up. I mean, now it lives inside of there, but. So now we've got that one. The wire's gonna go in there. All 
all the way down this backside. And then hopefully it's not too dark, but you'll see where we've already done this once, again, for our lighting that we did. But now they want me to do it about right in line with this hinge. Now I believe we have all of the holes drilled. We gotta go find Sergio. I know he's had a very busy day today, so we're kind of catching after hours. That goes slow, man. <laughs> What's up, Sergio? What? Look at this custom wiring, IEP-USA.com. Uh, this is this is not Sergio's yeah. handiwork. You don't like it? I mean, at least yeah. they put tape to keep it from destroying the wire. Look. Top notch. Ooh, yeah, that thing's seen better days, huh? <laughs> But we're fixing this. So. Oh, okay, okay, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, new. Now, putting these grommets on has been a blast. Oh, I think I put it on backwards. Oh, wait, no, 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 we're, we're the right way. Okay, whew. So, I totally forgot to put one on behind that. All right, so we got Sergio's secret uh, fishing wire here. It's, well, we got a couple of different things yeah. to put together. <laughs> All right. I lost the other one. This is, this is the expert, though. Again, you guys saw me fight it last night. So, you know, we're gonna take Sergio's expertise. Now, while he's pushing that down, I gotta wait till I feel it down here. Push it in more, or? I think pull it back. Pull it back? Yeah. We need to mark like two inches from the end. Uh, Orange. Yeah. Alright, keep going back. Alright, uh, all right, push. One handed, one handed, buddy. We got it, we're there. there yeah. Alright. It's fun, right? This is a lot of fun, yeah. <laughs> now that we've got the wire run through, we're going to raise up the box so we can route it down the side. Now, one of the cool things about Diamond Sea Trailers is they put all of these little hangers. I don't know what's in the bed, but a lot of water just came out from underneath here from me and in the rain. Uh, but they put little hangers all the way around to catch all of the wire. So, should be pretty easy for uh, Sergio to run his stuff. I mean, you know, it just doesn't get any easier, Sergio. They put all these little pass-throughs in their frame, but they're already grommeted. Because that's where they ran all of the factory wiring through. So, we're just chasing through there. We'll zip tie it up to the factory wiring, uh, we pass through there. Now Sergio's got the fun job. There is a hole that passes through into the toolbox, but we've already kind of maxed it out with a bunch of the <laughs> added lighting that we did. Oh, there you go, a little bit of lube on there, Sergio. There or a lot of bit of lube. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> wait, wait. Huh. Oh, we need some more lube. So we have like at least 10 feet extra of <laughs> of wire here. Alrighty, so this came with a uh, thermal fuse, which is this bad boy right here. Sergio, I think it might be time that we, uh, <laughs> we've done a few iterations of wiring on this thing. Sergio, how does a thermal fuse work? It has a small piece of material, metal, that is exactly a certain amount of heat, it will bend by itself. Okay. So a lot of current or, or a short will cause it to go hot and it will jump when it cools down, it will go and come back by itself. So it's a resettable, oh. automatic resettable fuse, basically. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The issue with that is if you have a short, it will keep keep going, and then you might damage other stuff because you make a constant short. Gotcha. Coming back down, Sergio. We're coming back down. Watch your head. Watch your You're fingers. Scaring me. Watch your fingers. You're okay, buddy. We got this. It's not bad. I should probably mount that up. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Sergio, look it. We would have been saved. We would have been saved. All right, we forgot the bar. Uh, I totally forgot. We do have to connect to those, and then I should just probably self tap that on them. Trying to get Sergio out of here at a reasonable hour, though. I guess we're. Are we open? Oh, close. Hey, 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 hey. Does it tell you to go all the way out? Or? No, but it was easier to get all the stuff out of the way. Watch your head, Sergio. <laughs> Run, buddy. Let's see, let's see. I don't know what's falling off with it. There's some stuff in the box. It has a little a little clutch in there that doesn't let you actually like over tighten the thing. So that's good. Hey, hey, hey. Look at that. That's fast. Like, you're doing it I know. Done. Alrighty guys, now we are mounting 
the control box. And check out these self tappers. These came with the Sherco, which is this whole system. But it looks like a tap and die set, or I guess that would be a tap. And it's got little tap threads on the bottom. You still gotta drill a hole for it. I'm using the impact, it gets a little sketchy. I'm not gonna lie. The last one made some noises that made me think I was gonna break the uh, bolt. But nah, so it worked perfectly. Alrighty, now we gotta put the outer cover on to make it look all nice and pretty. Operating instructions, you, you threw my wireless remote away. Ah. All right. Is it grass up here? Dang, this thing's got all kinds of cool functions. Connect receiver to power, make sure target receiver is connected. Prepare remote. Open remote and use the select button to set the desired channel. On the receiver, push and hold both open and close buttons. After three seconds, you will hear a buzzer beep. Release buttons. All right, hold on. After three seconds, the channel indicator will go solid. Remote. Hey! We got a remote now, Sergio. There you go, and you can select other stuff. But That's cool, yeah. You can use this. We for... need to get the receivers though, from them. Uh, we are tarp. Okay, now that we've got that system all buttoned up, we have to put the new Diamond C logos on it. I've never installed something like this. You can't really do it like a decal because, well, it's not a decal. I can't just tape it in place. It's 3D. It's got some dimension to it. So I really, I really hope I don't screw this up. So these are actually, I think these are a little, no, it's about the same size of what was on there. Oh, this is gonna be sketchy. These things are heavy. Don't touch nothing, don't touch nothing. How are you supposed to do this? Oh man, I've installed a lot of decals in my day. This is tough now. Oh, 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 we're stuck now. Oh, oh no, oh no, ah. no, how that, oh no, I just made it touch again. No. Come on, boogers, we're not ready yet. We're not ready yet. We're not ready. We're not ready. Inch and five eighths. That's not good. That's not good. Check that out. Woo! Guys, these things are seriously sick. Look at how badass these letters look. So sick. Remember back in the days when we all got our Duramaxes and we changed out the badging, uh, the Duramax badge on the hood to like a black one or a black and white one? That's what this equates to in my mind. This just looks so good on the trailer. The 3D is sick. And you're not gonna have that uh, fading or like a little bit of the the adhesive splooging out like you do on the decals on the other side. Alrighty y'all, we've got both new logos on the tongue looking absolutely awesome. We've got a third remote now to add to our remote collection, but this thing is sick. I think Diamond C was sick of me uh, asking for remotes for stuff, so they just sent this one out. Cool thing about this one though is again, it is built into this system. So I don't know what that's gonna do for battery draw, um, but there's probably gonna be some type of battery draw just like those other two. Super, super cool system. I gotta give a huge thank you to the folks over at Diamond C for always keeping me updated with their newest, latest, and greatest stuff that they have. If you guys haven't considered Diamond C trailers, you know, I'm not paid to say anything that I say to you guys. Just know that. All I speak from is experience, and these trailers are freaking phenomenal. Uh, you know, at this point, we've gotta be probably one of the most pimped out dump trailers that are out there right now. I mean, the amount of stuff we have done to this thing. Let's just get all the lights on because this remote decided it wants to work today. Look at that, hold on, hold on. If we turn the, nope, turn that one off. There we go, now it turns those ones into strobes. I'm gonna pull this thing out. I haven't had all these strobes on at night. I miss it. Let's see what it looks like.
Okay, well you can see it is a tight squeeze to get this thing in and out of the shop, but she is out looking good as ever. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, hit a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforwardapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best, I'm out. Damn. Uh.